of all, I just wanted to touch on um, the patriarchal nature of pregnancy and birth nowadays. Um, so to just explain what patriarchy means, it just means basically that it's male dominated um, and indicates that they are superior in some way and also have like a, a open disdain for womankind. And the reason I think that the birthing space nowadays is very patriarchal and dominant is because from the 60s, at least in Britain, I'm sure um, in the other countries around the world, birth was taken into um, men's hands when birth was moved from the home into a hospital setting. And suddenly birth was something that needed to be controlled, systemized and um, follow a certain like linear graphical format with machines um, determining whether it was progressing or whether it wasn't progressing quick enough or um, and you know just lots of tools and things to measure like dilation and this that and the other. Now before that when women had been supporting women in childbirth none of those machines and controlled measures existed. They were there for emotional support and with their actual wisdom um, and knowledge because they themselves had given birth, you know, the people that were supporting the women. And they knew a lot. And, you know, some of the information went back from ancestors before. Um, even down to the fact that in the 60s, women were told that it was more progressive and more ladylike to lie on their back in bed. It's just absolute lunacy and can only have come from a man because every woman who's ever given birth knows that that's the most uncomfortable <laughs> and also dangerous position to give birth in because it's a position that completely restricts your pelvis and the passage of the baby is very, very compromised. So you're more prone to tearing, more prone to the baby getting stuck and it will take a lot longer and um, be a lot more painful than if you were able to move around, be on all four, standing up, sitting down, anything but lying down. But it was actually some French king um, in the 18th, 19th century, who wanted to see his baby being born. And the physician said, oh, well, why don't we get your wife to lie down then? And from then on, it was seen as much more ladylike and posher and more high society to lie down in bed. But can you imagine even just passing a poo lying in bed? Please, it would be a lot harder, right? So how on earth are you supposed to give birth lying down um, without there being a whole lot of commotion? So that's just one of the examples. But the other examples of how patriarchy has just changed the whole way of birth is because men obviously have never given birth. They've never even carried a child. So to them, it's this like mystical mystery as to how this is even happening. And I agree, it does seem incredible. It does even seem unimaginable that the female body can do this, you know, can conceive a child, can grow the baby, can push all your organs out of the way to accommodate this baby, and keep both alive more than well, and then birth this baby. It's incredible, but it has been happening for 300,000 years, so I think we've got enough proof that it works, right? But because men got it in their hands, they wanted to analyze it, they wanted to control it, they wanted to understand it in a much more robotical, technical, mechanical way. And just the strangest of practices started coming in that completely made women um, lose control of their bodies, make them feel inferior that, you know, they didn't own their bodies anymore and they were being policed by these men and their weird practices. So during pregnancy, it'd be things like, you know, having to be scanned on a monthly basis and monitored and all that kind of thing. But during birth, it's far worse. During birth, in certain countries, even to this day, um, especially like where I am now, Costa Rica or Latin America, Central America, but in other countries too, Women are not allowed to eat or drink when they're giving birth. They're not allowed to go and use the toilet when they want to. They're not allowed to scream or shout out because they're told they're making a fuss. They aren't allowed to have their husband or other birth partner of their choice with them. They aren't allowed to decide whether they have an episiotomy. It's just routinely done to them. So they're coerced and manipulated the minute they try and maybe exercise some kind of ownership over their own body they're told that no that that's unsafe that will endanger the baby that will endanger them do they want a dead baby you know words like that are coming out of these medical practitioners mouths and not just males females as well but they've been influenced by these males you know these nurses and things 
So um, it's just incredibly scary to think that so many of our female human rights are being taken away from us and from our babies because of these patriarchal systems. And the point of this video is to say, for goodness sake, women, take birth back into the female domain because that's where it belongs. We know that birth cannot be predicted on a graph or in a linear way of, of how quickly it's going to happen. We know it's not something that, you know, can be determined to take, I don't know, between six and 12 hours and you dilate, I don't know, a centimeter every hour or whatever these men are trying to say happens. It doesn't happen like that. You could dilate from zero to 10 in 10 minutes if you felt like you were safe enough and your oxytocin was flowing, or it could take you 40, 50, 60 hours as well. It doesn't matter. The whole point is it doesn't matter it's not something that we are supposed to be controlling. It's supposed to be something that we're supporting and nurturing the birthing mother with. Um, so all this technical, mechanical stuff that's supposed to help is such a hindrance. My mother had it herself when she was having me. She was um, having really strong contractions and she was told that she was being dramatic and to be quiet because the machine wasn't saying anything was happening, so it couldn't be happening. And you can imagine the panic that set her into thinking, oh my goodness, if this isn't it, what is? Um, and then hours later, a physician came around and said, oh no, that machine's broken, of course she's in labor. And it's just like, why are we putting so much emphasis on, on you know, the machines and the, the, the masculine way of doing things rather than listening to the woman herself? It just, it's incredulous. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to leave you to think of that. There are so many other examples that I'll probably go into in great depth with blissful birthing but I just wanted you to just think about those points because it just doesn't make any logical sense to me that birth is so male dominated nowadays um, and that you know we're not reclaiming it enough but saying that there is now a massive awakening and resurgence of women claiming their power the ones that are really quite savvy and you know um, much more conscious and aware and if that's the mother that you want to be, then it's really worth considering looking at the way we've been giving birth for 300,000 years rather than the way we've been doing it for the last 60. Because I don't think the human race would be here if we keep doing it the way we're doing it. It's just fraught with so many complications and interventions and traumas that giving birth um, feels like such an ordeal in the wrong hands. But in the right hands, it can be the most beautiful magical blissful experience of your life so i really hope that you embrace that way instead thanks for listening bye for now